Alrighty, sir. This is the base clef. Now, what we're looking at when we were drawing these out and knowing what our keys are and what note association they have is the thing that we read music on is going to be called a staff. And on the staff, it's called the grand staff when you have a top clef and a bottom clef. Just so happens the two major clefs that we use together are the treble clef and the bass clef. There's also an alto clef, a tenor clef, and then there's like three or four other several different clefs which we won't even mention. Treble clef is going to be in the key of G, and bass clef is going to be in the key of F. So with the treble clef, what we're seeing here and what we're seeing with the bass clef is going to be this. On our bass clef, these notes that are written on the line are called lines on the staff. They're on these ledger lines. So this note right here, this note right here, this note right here, and this right right here are on the lines. So this bottom line is called line one. So when we see this note and then we play it, we're going to be playing that note correlating to the lines. Just as we can see the spaces here. You got a pretty fair assumption of how we mark these, but I want you to know. In the bass clef, it has this little guy and it goes on the actual F line, which means this is an F, which means the space is a G, the line here is an A, space is a B, and then right here we've got middle C. The middle C is the divider between the treble clef and the bass clef. So when we're playing piano, that's middle C. Everything below it is considered bass, everything above it is considered treble. So what happens here on the piano when we play this bass clef, this middle C here dictates that everything that's below there is going to be played with our left hand. And then everything that's above this middle C is going to be played with our right hand, generally. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at this bass clef down here. And what the first thing we do is we look at all the information given to us. Like we're looking at a, uh, a legend for a map or like the code to a game or uh, the color scheme for an art, art drawing. In this, we're looking at the grand, the uh, not the grand staff, just the staff here, because it's, this is the bass clef. And what I notice is this is in 4-4. Four, four. So the time signature is gonna have four quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If it were to say three, four, I would have one, two, three, one, two, three. We basically omit the fourth beat. However, it's still there. If you're still playing these notes together, what we would absolutely have would be something along the lines of one, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. Even though my hands are beating at the same time, I'm counting this one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So what happens is we get duple meters. Well, with this, when we're reading this, what we have to do is see this as being the bass clef and know that this note is F. So if we were to find the F note on the piano, we would go to middle C and then go down to the F. Uh, that gives us a tonal starting point. F, 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 F. F, E, D, C, D, E, F. See how I read the note values? Both of these are circles with no filled in and they have a line going down, which means the line is called a staff. S-T-A-V-E, stave or staff, S-T-A-F-F. -F. The staff going down denotes that that is a bass note. This note is actually a half note, which means it gets two beats. The next note next to it gets two beats as well. If we add these two beats to these two beats, we get four beats, meaning there are four beats in this measure, exactly what our time signature showed us. So in this beat, we've got two quarter notes and one half note. Well, we know that the half note is worth two beats because of this measure, so how many beats are each of these quarters worth? Well, if they were worth two beats, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six beats is too much for four four, so each one of these quarters is only worth one beat. What we'd have is F, 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 one, two, one, two, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All together, reading these, I could say half note, half note, quarter, quarter, half note, 
quarter, 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 half note. And each one of those would equal. Here's another bass. Let's look at the time signature. This is 4-4. Four, four, and I know that it's quieter. Well, not forte. Forte! Or mezzo forte. A little bit quieter than that. This also starts on an F, so I'm gonna go and find my F right here. So I have a starting note and I'm gonna count it out. One, two, ready, go. F, 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 E, D, C, D, E, F, 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 F. F, E, D, C, D, E, F. So what I just did was I read each one of those in order. Can you follow back, rewind the video and do this as well? I'm gonna count it out for us here too. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. 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 So, if I were going to be playing that on the piano or on the ukulele, it would sound like this. one of those notes exhibited the same amount of value that it had per its assigned note value. Since I'm reading it and I can't go lower than a C, that's my thickest and my lowest string, I'm going to transpose it up just a little bit. So I'm going to find my F note and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the same amount of note value that I have for this. F, 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 E, D, C, D, E, F. Uh...